Hello guys, in this video, I shall be treating the topic DNA transcription and translation. At the end of this video, you will do well to subscribe to my channel, like and share. Um, you will recall that in one of my previous videos, I treated what we call the central dogma of biology or the central dogma of life or life sciences. That central dogma easily or simply put states that DNA, new DNA is manufactured from existing DNA. That process is called replication. You may want to check that video on replication so that you can catch up. The central dogma goes on to state that DNA is converted into a molecule called RNA. And this process of conversion or copying of DNA, the information in DNA into an RNA, is the process we call transcription. Furthermore, according to the central dogma, RNA can be converted into protein. This process that translates or converts the RNA into protein is what we call translation. Okay. So the central dogma teaches that information of life, the hereditary information of life is contained in a molecule called the DNA. All information that controls life is contained in this molecule that we call the DNA. And by that, this information, for it to be expressed, for it to be made sense of, into phenotypical characteristics of the animal or plants or whatever expressible character that the information is contained in the DNA for you to express that information, these processes have to take place. That information has to be copied into an intermediate molecule called the RNA. The RNA has to carry that information and that information has to be interpreted or expressed into a functional product, which is oftentimes a protein. So DNA transcription and RNA and translation can be called in another way, gene expression. Gene expression. A gene is a, a region, technically speaking, or with respect to this topic, I would like to define a gene in the strictest form that a gene is a region on the chromosome. Don't forget, this is like your double helix chromosome. And a gene could be viewed as a region on a chromosome that codes for a protein. Any region on a chromosome that codes for a functional product, that means a product that has a biological function. A product that has a biological function, in this case, is a protein. Most often case, it's a protein. So all expressible or all information in the DNA are expressed in the form of protein. So a gene could be defined or redefined in this case, not just the hereditary unit of life, but that the region on the, on, on the chromosome, any region on the chromosome that carries information for the coding of a product, of a genetic product, or a protein in this case. Some units on this chromosome may not code for anything, may not code for a protein. So you have some units that code, some regions that code, some regions that do not code. So we have introns and we have exons on the chromosome, okay? So, but now, right about now, we are interested in looking, at taking a closer look at transcription and translation. So come with me into the cell. Let us look at the cell, the animal cell, or the plant cell. 
the DNA is oftentimes lodged or housed in a, an organelle in the cell called the nucleus. So this is the nucleus. In it, DNA is housed there in chromosomes, packed and arranged in chromosomes this way. So there are many chromosomes here, uh, different chromosomes, different numbers of chromosomes depending on the species. Okay, so um, just like I said in that previous video about replication, there are enzymes that are involved in replicating DNA. S in similar fashion, there are enzymes that are involved in the production of RNA. You may want to think about DNA, uh, think of DNA like, um, I like to use this example, like the head of, let us say, a syndicate, or permit me to say a crime organization, or even military group. The head of a military group, the strategies, the main person that has the idea, that has the strategy, that has the direction he wants his organization to go. If this organization is a proscribed organization or is some organization that is into something that is unlawful, that person might not be seen all over the place. It will not be in the interest of the organization for that person to be seen on the streets. You will agree with me that he will be arrested. But he is the think tank of that organization. So that person might be hidden somewhere. He could be hidden underground. He could be hidden in some strongholds. He might even be operating from a prison undercover. So, but he's got the idea, all right? So where, where he is hidden with all his ideas, for his ideas to make sense, for his ideas to be carried out on the street or in the society, there has to be some go in between some messengers some guys some trusted allies of his that will make contact with him and some foot soldiers out there follow me so he has these trusted guys buddies of his they come to him they get the information from him what next is to be done so they carry that information in the form of secrets or a code or a strategy, they go out there and they communicate the same information to some guys who execute the job. So there's something in the military. There are some guys who strategize for the military. They stay in the planning room. They don't go to the war field. So, but they got the ideas. They draw out these ideas on the drawing table. They write their minds. Then at the end of the day, they carry this idea and give some some guys that take these ideas to give to the people on the field for final execution this is just about the kind of thing that is happening here at the molecular level so so the dna is so important it carries very sensitive information but it is not in the idea in the in the interest of nature in fact it wouldn't be a good organization if the dna is mobile and it goes about expressing you know all the information that it carries it goes to one part of the body it goes here it goes here it goes here. in the process of that if the dna is not well protected it could undergo some changes it could undergo some harm it could undergo some alteration that alteration of the dna is what we call mutation and a simple alteration in the dna or a simple mutation could now alter the message the originally intended message are you with me so because of that, this thing, the molecule called DNA is one of the most protected molecule in nature because of the importance of the DNA in perpetuation of species, the importance of DNA in giving species their peculiarity, the importance of DNA in carrying hereditary material, all kinds of material that will be, will be interpreted for the processes of life to take place. So such an, uh, an, an, an a molecule, okay? You could imagine that it is so important, so it is housed in this region of the cell, the nucleus. Now, in, in the course of transcription, enzymes come in here. You know, during replication, I mentioned some enzymes like the helicase. In this case, the something. 
the enzyme starts a process. Let us zoom in on one of these strands. Let's zoom in on them. Okay. Then you see the enzyme helicase will open up. Open up one of these. Um, one of these um, double helix structure. One of these chromosomes. Could be opened up to create, in this case, a transcription bubble. Unlike in replication, we have a replication bubble, but this, in this case now, this is like a transcription bubble. So this thing is opened up, create a space is created. So let us say this is three prime, this is five prime. This is a double helix. It has um, three prime, five prime, one. The, the other end here, we might just have a five prime and three prime end, okay? If you still want to learn more about the structure, of the DNA, check one of my previous videos that is available for you. So now let us go in here and say um, the original sequence of this uh, DNA here. Let us say this is C, C, A, T, G, um, uh, G, and A. Just example. Okay. Now the enzyme RNA polymerase in replication. The, the main enzyme that was responsible or that is responsible for replication or for elongation or for manufacturing or copying or production of new DNA is called DNA polymerase. There are a number of uh, subversions of them. We have DNA polymerase 1, DNA polymerase 2, DNA polymerase 3, but pretty much what they do generally has to do with copying or editing or elongation of DNA. But in this case, we have RNA polymerase. Here too, we have RNA, RNA polymerase 1 and 2 and stuff. But generally, what RNA polymerase does is it builds new RNA. It copies DNA and, and into and transcribes it into RNA. So let us say that our RNA polymerase gets to job here, it comes to job here. To work here what it's gonna do is um so let's we, we call we call the enzyme rna polymerase polymerase all right sorry rna polymerase so if rna polymerase comes here by the way rna polymerase is going to copy an existing an existing dna strand from the direction of three prime to five prime. It will copy a strand of DNA from the direction three prime to five prime, but a new strand or a new molecule of RNA will oftentimes be manufactured in the five prime to three prime direction. So here we have the nucleotide C RNA. We, we insert a G here in the construction of a new uh, strand of RNA here too. In place of a C, there will be a G that is complementary. You will recall in previous videos that C is oftentimes complementary to G. And then A goes with T. And then here in place of an A, you are going to have a T. In place of a T, instead of having an A here, just like it is in DNA, you will have a U. Reason being that RNA does not have timing. RNA uses uracil in place of thymine in like fashion in place of g there will be a complementary c there will be another complementary c here there will be a complementary t over here this now becomes your new strand of rna this new strand of rna carrying this message here g g t u c c t will get exported to say it is exported, exported. It is carrying this message G G U C C T. It is now exported. This is what we call the messenger RNA. Messenger RNA. Why do we call it messenger RNA? Because it carries a message. Simple. It bears a message. It is just like a postman. It's just like a courier. It has copied the message from the DNA 
and that message is in the form of a code so it is carrying a secret message that it has copied from the dna in in complementary fashion so normally messenger rna is a single stranded molecule it's not double stranded like the dna just single stranded okay one other key difference you need not to forget is that it, on the messenger rna the the nucleotide that is complementary to that of uh, a t is a u because it doesn't have an adenine it doesn't have an a in amongst its own four nucleotides so it leaves with this message to the factory the, 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 the protein manufacturing factory in the cell that factory is called the ribosome okay so RNA copies a new, newly manufactured RNA here that has just been produced by the RNA polymerase. Mm -hmm. Copies the message here, leaves here with the message, and then takes it to the ribosome. In the ribosome, that is where the message will be decoded. That is where the message on this RNA will be read or will be made sense of, or in other words, will be translated. This is translated. It will be read. Okay, it will be decoded. So this message here will be decoded in the ribosome to make polypeptides or uh, polypeptide or protein. This will be used to make polypeptide or protein. So it is this polypeptide or protein that becomes the expressible unit or the expressible means of the message that was on the DNA or that was in the DNA. So the copying or the translation of this message follows a rule or follows a code, which I shall be considering in subsequent video, that code, we call it genetic code. So do not forget, DNA is copied here into an mRNA, which is just an intermediate product. Okay, the mRNA carries the message to the ribosome and in the ribosome the message is decoded is made sense of it is interpreted in a process that we call genetic code i hope to see you in that subsequent video do well again to like and subscribe and share thank you